how to do direct mail marketing for real estate. Guys, by the end of this video, you're gonna not only know the hottest list to get your hands on, but ultimately how to get your first mail campaign out so you can start talking to motivated sellers today. Having the right list to get your hands on is absolutely crucial, but if you don't couple that with the right mail piece, it means absolutely nothing. So I'm gonna break down not only just the hottest list that you need to get your hands on, but more importantly, what mail piece to send out so you can start talking to motivated sellers today and start getting deals in as little as 30 days. Let's first talk about the hot list. Now, all of us, we always hear this like, oh, the hottest list, the hot list. How do we get our hands on the hot list? I wanna break those down in a simple one. Now, I'm really data-driven. When it comes to my business, I don't wanna be mind-driven. I don't wanna be the one that's always looking at, like, I think this is my best performing list. Or I think if I have extra two grand this month, I'm gonna put it on this list. Or I'm gonna put it on this mail piece. Or I'm going to do this marketing channel. I'm gonna spend it based off what I think. We need to be data-driven. So the data I'm gonna give you today is looking through past, like, key performing indicators, my KPIs, and really dialing in where our hottest list are, and more importantly, what is it producing for us? How we're able to do deals. Now, the other thing we have to test is the mail piece. So let's start breaking that down. Starting with our list, there's four. There's four that you gotta get your hands on. This has been something that's been like a running KPI or a running hot list for us, these four lists that I'm gonna share with you right now. So it comes with the acronym PEND. P-E-N-N-D. So the letter P, stands for probate. Probate are just as simple as someone passes away and then someone's going to inherit the home. Usually it's a family member, usually it's a group, maybe it's siblings, brothers and sisters. When mom passes away, now they're inheriting the home. Probate ends up being a really hot, hot list for you to get your hands on. Now, how do we get our hands on this list? Every one of these lists I'm gonna share with you, these are public record in every state. So it's really just reaching out to your county buildings, your city buildings, and some of the smaller cities out there, it might be a township or a municipality, and then most importantly, your courthouses. Now, some cities have this available online, so as I share these lists, realize your first source should be getting on Google and just simply doing a search that says probate records in Utah or people on the probate list or people on, and we'll start talking about all these different lists. Do that first. When you do courthouse, also add the words repository. Repository is a keyword that triggers public access or public records. So make sure you add that in the keyword search. If you can't find online, it might be that you physically have to go down to the courthouse, to the county, or to the city to get this list. The next list is E, and it stands for eviction. Now, why is it that we like eviction? First and foremost, it's easy for us to get our hands on. It's one that's a public record. And these are from like what we call tired landlords. These are individuals that were once excited, they owned rentals, they have properties that they rent out, and now for some reason, maybe it's because they're older in age and like, this is too much management, we don't wanna do it anymore, or it could be much like a deal that I came across right at the early stages of a wholesaling, driving by a property, and there was a for rent sign outside. I went uh, to that sign, looked up the number, called it, and the landlord was on the other line. It wasn't ran by a property manager. He was self-managing it. I reached out to him and said, hey, is this home still available? He says, yep, it's still available. And he's kind of short with me. So I said, okay, well tell me this, would you uh, entertain actually an offer on this home versus me actually renting this home? And he says, oh, you caught me at the right time. He's like, this duplex on one side, my tenant was smoking meth in it. On this other side, they dumped concrete down the toilets. And so I could already see he was frustrated. And we ended up putting a deal together where I was able to turn it for a profit because I was able to put this home at a deep discount under contract. So the biggest thing here is eviction. Eviction is just another way of motivation, but you can get your hands on it in an easy way. That can be done through your courthouse, your city, or your county buildings. Now the other way to do that is talk to an eviction attorney or a probate attorney from these two lists. If they're able to, sometimes they're not able to refer stuff out, but sometimes they can as an option to help their clients out, they may refer your name as an option. The third one, N, is notice of default. These are kind of like the pre-pre foreclosure. The person that just 
didn't pay, like they haven't caught up on is just one mortgage payment that they're behind. They're gonna get what's called a notice of default. This list is actually really, really, really big. So you're gonna wanna hone in not on just the big list. It could be 50,000 where you live, people on this notice of default list. And maybe you only have money to talk to 10,000 people or send out marketing to 10,000 people. So what you're gonna do is couple this list with knowledge from like a local real estate agent that you can talk to and say, hey, in what zip codes are there hot deals going on? Are there cash transactions going on where cash buyers are buying homes for cash? And they could tell you in this specific zip code. And you can start to narrow that list down by zip code and see if it gives you the number. And then if that doesn't reach it, ask for more zip codes that are also hot where they're doing cash transactions so that you can expand that list until you get the number that you want. Now, a great thing about notice of default, this is one that you can get from your local title company or your closing attorney. And because it's your goal, and maybe you're already doing, if you've been doing this for a long time, great. You've already got the credibility that you're bringing deals to your title company. You've already got the credibility that you're bringing it to your closing attorney. This is something that they should give you for free. Because you're bringing them business, and if you're a beginner, because it's your intent to use them in the future, they get access to this. They have the software. They have the data to pull to get this list. Be sure to work out a deal where you don't pay for this list, but that you trade doing the business with them to close on your deals in lieu of them helping you out and getting your hands on this list. Now for the last one, D. That stands for divorce. Divorce again is one that shows a sign of motivation. This is why we like all four of these lists. They all have motivation tied to it, whether it's tied to uh, a distressed house or a distressed situation that a homeowner is going through. Divorce is much similar to this. You have a couple that's going through a distressed situation and in most cases, they have to separate their assets. They're looking to sell their home so they can split assets, split money, and head off in the other direction. And a lot of times they want to do it quick. So a good place to get this from is you've got divorce attorneys that you can definitely be an option for them. They may not say, hey, this is the only guy you want to do business with, but they may say, hey, as an option, if you're looking to sell quick and you're looking for a cash offer, here's an opportunity that these guys do exactly that or you can list it on the MLS and they can present their options. The other way of doing that is just again, your courthouse, your city, and your county. Go down there and get those records that you have access to because these are public records. All right guys, before we finish strong talking about the power of direct mail and how to implement this correctly in your business, I'd love for you to hit that subscribe button because if you're wanting to truly build your wholesaling business, that's what this channel is all about and dedicated to is helping you guys get out of your own way so you can get out there and consistently do more deals. One big question I get out there is, do I send a letter or do I send a postcard? Let me break it down in real time analogy. We just got done with the NBA championship, the NBA final right and I go out for when I talk about like what is better letter or postcard same thing when I come to thinking about like basketball the actual sport I look at is it better for one guy to shoot one three-pointer or is it better for another guy that's on the same shot but he gets 10 shots to shoot three-pointers which one's gonna likely win or outperform the other person it's gonna be the one that gets the most attempts, the most shots. Now, how do we tie this into our direct mail piece? Should I do letter or should I do postcard? A letter can be, and depending on what some people's letters do, it can be as high as like a buck 50. Some people are doing those like yellow letters that are handwritten and they're in like a nice envelope and then they're hiring it out and it's like a buck 25. Well, a postcard can be sent out for 37 cents. So you can send out three or four postcards for the price of one letter. Which one am I gonna do? I'm gonna do the postcard every time because I want as many attempts possible. I want as many looks possible. I want as many people having the opportunity to see my message that I'm a buyer looking to buy a home so they can reach out to me. So if you're gonna pick the postcard, what should it look like? Guys, keep this simple. That's marketing 101. Keep it simple. You cannot overcomplicate this. Do not overcomplicate this. Everyone wants to get cute with the postcard. They want to send out with pictures of themselves on it, or they want to send it out with a home in the background and a couple like excited and they have cash in their hands because they just sold their home. Get rid of those pictures. You want to keep this so simple because people don't want to be sold, but yet every one of us, we're buyers. We all buy, but we don't like when we're being sold. When you put pictures on it, people don't even have to read their message. They're already associating that to someone's trying to sell me, they throw it in the garbage. So we keep it simple. We have a white postcard with just black handwritten font that just has a simple message. We are interested in buying your home at 123 Main Street. For a fair cash offer, call us at, boom. Just a simple 
simple message that makes people have to read it to know what it's about. All right, so who do we use to mail our actual postcards? We used to do this in-house. We used to have an individual literally print on a big paper, like four postcards, cut them in half, stamp them all, and go mail them off herself. We had to get more efficient. We wanted to send out more than just this long process of cutting out postcards, stamping them herself. We thought we were saving money. We were spending more because the hours that it took this individual to do it. So we do use a mail house. Now guys, you can use any mail house out there. I'd suggest getting out there with individuals that can at least perform at a 37 cents. Normally when you get to like bulk, you're sending out 5,000, 10,000 at any given time. Maybe they'll drop that down as low as 34 cents. So really you can go out there and shop the mail houses. There's not any particular one, but if you do want a referral of one that we use, I've included a link down in the description box down below. And this one also has our template in it. So you wouldn't have to make up your own template. You can just use the template that's in that link by just clicking on it. Let me give you a pro tip, something that we've learned over the years. We used to just send out mail whenever. We just say, oh, today's a good day to send out mail and we'd send it out. But what we've learned through just really tracking our numbers and really understanding when is our best response rate and how does this all work to our benefit at the best, like the best way possible is we were finding out that you've got to check with your mail house because this is going to be different for everyone. But when mail hits the seller's hand on a Thursday, what we found out was we were getting very little responses to no responses on Monday and Tuesday when the mail hit their hands on those days. Why? That's when bulk mail goes out. That's when everyone else's marketing piece go out and that's when it's super thick. So be sure to make sure you talk with your mail house and say, I want my mail to hit the seller's hand on Thursday and you'll see your response rate increase. All right guys, down below I've included a link that gets you access to our 30 day close your first wholesale deal challenge. All you gotta do is simply click on that link below so it can take you from A to Z, from start to finish, how to close your first deal in as little as 30 days.